welcome to the channel. Uh, before I uh, reveal what's going on with the budget cart challenge, make sure to like and subscribe the channel. Um, hit the notification icon, all that kind of stuff. We, we want to build the channel this year, so all of that kind of stuff helps immensely. Also, um, if you want to become a patron, please check the link below. Uh, without the help on there, none of this really would be possible. So get cracking, get on there and uh, give us a helping hand. So what's going on, what's going on? Well, it's safe to say the last sort of 16 months have not been particularly good. Uh, I've had a few people ask me about the budget cart challenge and what's happening because obviously it didn't happen last year but this summer we're back it's going to be bigger and better um i can't reveal too much at the moment but it's um it's not going to be a lone venture and uh <laughs> i can't wait to see to see how it all unfolds but um let's let's have a look at look at my uh my weapon of choice um it's been a hard year owning a, a Rotax, just emotionally. I haven't put it on the track yet, but it's affected me deeply. But, you know, life can do that to you sometimes when you're trying to prove a point. But um, let's take a look at the cart. Let's see what's. Uh, let's see what I've done to it. Nothing major. Um, but I think the whole process has been very educational. And um, apart from the, the sort of fun and silly aspect to it, I think there's actually quite a lot of... Uh, lessons to, to learn from it so let's take a look and uh, I'll, I'll uh, update you on what I've done to it so here she is Wink. for reasons which I won't go too much into at the moment um, sticking to that £600 budget well, it was initially £500 and then, and then I took it to £600 right? but is is very important <laughs> so um it was quite lucky that when I did the the, uh, the videos about building my own car and all that kind of stuff and um, reality, financial reality started to really dig in last year and I think a lot of people watching this, I think a fair few of will, will relate to that, um, I had to stop. But in that process, in that process of stripping down the car and, observe, and really taking a good look at everything, um, that was quite a good uh, thing to do. Um, I think on one of the videos... Uh, I said there might have been a hairline crack. This was the, the axle video, actually. I think I found a hairline crack on the, the axle. I don't think it's actually a crack, but it it was like a scratch, and I thought, mm, I better just change it just in case. And at that point, I wasn't really thinking about the budget cart challenge, and um, and obviously, with with more information coming about that as we, as we go through the year, um, it was like, oh, no. No, I have to spend money, and I, did, I really don't want to spend money. And um, But alas, we fit a new axle, and um let's 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 just talk you through the cart really so i'm gonna swap the camera around and uh let's let's have a little tour so what do we have here so the axle you can see is new i fitted that um so it's all shiny it's it's the cheapest axle i could find i'm not really a big fan of the um the otk stuff i don't, I don't think it's worth the money um, so that was like 40 quid um, and, and, and when I bought the car I bought it for 600 pounds um, now I actually had a few spares so it had like a like a heel stop here and it had like a, a spare a spare brake disc and um, I sold those and that basically allows me to sort of this was I sold them right at the beginning so that allowed me to to keep the car um, relatively sort of well, not relatively. Can we can keep it under budget when I had to actually fit the new axle? But there's um, so so interestingly, um, sort of whole this process of of the budget car. I actually have found myself really. I do not envy at all someone trying to get into kart racing now. Um, I, I berate the governing bodies quite a lot, and I know, and, and I actually think the manufacturers are part of it as well. They have done a horrific job, in my view, of sort of trying to understand the kart racing from a, from a newcomer's perspective. So, for example, like for you and me, it was like if the rule came in and said drop down bumpers, right? So this is I'm doing this. I'm doing an IKR race, so it's it's, it's not an issue. They don't require it. 
But that that there, like just that trying to put a trying to buy a car and then finding out a little regulation regulation like that, it's like it's another it's another bit of money down the drain, you know? And obviously the video I did about the Nassau panel. And little things like, you know, if if you've got a car and you've bought a car but it didn't come with a battery, you know, a battery mount, let's say you know this here this you know and then you've got this that's like 30 40 quid whatever it is and it's just like people have no idea that like kart racing is supposed to be for the ordinary pers person you know and the 30 quid is like if you had a decent job right 10 pound an hour is a reasonable job it's above minimum wage that's three hours work that is three hours of your life to pay for a little bit of plastic, a little bit of metal, you know, and, and I find that kind of thing when you go through a car and you view it through the lens of the budget, the budget car challenge. Those sort of little little things you think, wow, you get blinded by, by sort of being involved in the sport. But oh Christ, I would not want to be a newcomer now. Um, what else have we done? Not much. Um, you know, like this, you know chain protector has to be fully enclosed now and that's been around for a while but again that's another little thing you're like oh blimey another little bit of money to have to spend um but positively we have got the car we have got it under budget and that's really important for the for the summer for me next stage really is i have to sort of get back into some sort of physical shape so i've been training kind of um just so i don't puke up after three laps so um i hope you can all follow follow the story as it unfolds um again there's 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 more to this like i said it's it's no longer a a lone wolf exercise and and i really want to prove to people that despite me complaining about you know maybe little bits and bobs you have to spend you can still do it you can still get into karting on a budget i mean i mean look at the end of the day I'm not. It's a bit, a bit uh, overexposed. I'll try and come over here. So you can get this whole, this whole cart I got for for 600 quid. Now, I know some people have messaged me and said, you know, how do I get a cart for that amount of money? It seems like a bit, a bit too difficult. Um, and I can understand that. I, I sort of know what to look for and that kind of stuff. But in the last few months, I have been sort of scouring eBay. I've been looking at. Uh, Facebook and that kind of thing and um, there are deals out there you just it's particularly like chassis I find um, if they're older than maybe if they're 10 years old perfectly usable you can get them for like 300 quid um, I think again the problem the problem that we have in carting is this 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 drip drip of regulation it just creates problems where you buy a car for 300 quid like it's like for me Personally, if I look at a car from, I don't know, say, say 2000, 2001, when it was the, the pod bars were sort of, they weren't, they didn't mount there, they sort of mounted there. Like, a car like that, you can find, they're like 10 a penny, you know, 100 quid, 200 quid, and they're actually perfectly reasonable cars. I mean, we're in the realm of health and safety, but a car can buy a motocross bike from like 1997 and race it at a, a motocross event, but I can't do that with a car. It kind of seems when you look at it in the cold light of day, it seems insane because it's like, you know, you don't have to spend three thousand pounds to get into car, and you can do it cheap. But the, the clubs don't really help themselves too much because a lot of them run um, regulations that you say you must adhere to this, you must adhere to that, and in reality, like that's that's a complete ball lake. It's why I like the open classes, especially IKR events, because they're much more sort of liberal with the rules and it means they're more open they're more welcoming and it's kind of like we're, we're, we're so wedded to this concept of like hyper regulation hyper conformity like sealed engine single make rubbish that even though i've got a rotax which i did to prove a point um you know any anything is possible what else what else oh one bit of advice remember folks when you buy a car you're buying a car yeah and I know some young drivers, they kind of um, try and get sponsorship and stuff. But if you're buying a car and you've got big Tony car logos, right? Tony car haven't paid you any money, right? You're doing them a favour. 
that you should always remember that you racing with their logo you're acting um, like a billboard for them and and how I feel is that if Tony Kart paid me money sure I'd run their run their logo but they're not right and I think it's a it's a big lesson because <laughs> I see people I was good for sponsorship and it's like why are you putting their logos all over your car the manufacturers or whatever they're not paying you money you're paying them money why are you advertising them you look any other motorsport I see a car and it'll be no adverts on it no no sponsorship and it's like you know they don't buy a, a Honda and then put a big Honda well some do so I'll, I'll stop there some people are like that but so yeah I just thought I'd do a quick update video sorry for me walking about I can't help it I hate standing in the same spot doing videos um, so yeah keep you know just I really wanted to show everybody that we're back on track hopefully and um, we're gonna get back to it this year you can see the car is here it's not the most pristine car in the world the stickers that I bought seem to be peeling off when I I don't know why they are. I have to buy new stickers but maybe not I'll just glue them down or something but um yeah it's looking good mate let's have a good summer hope everybody else has a good summer and all that and uh, we can get back to it all right thanks for watching and um see you soon